Hey everyone, this is Mr. Everything, and I wanted to touch on the uh, 2012 Mac Mini. I've made a good bit of videos on this. I picked it up in 2019. I think at that point it was still relevant, but now in 2022, and I think for the better, uh, finally I think there's Mac Minis that are way better than the 2019 or the 2012. And uh, I just kind of touch on that a little bit. I mean, there's really not much more I can do with this. I'm just going to kind of sum up my use with it. And you can see I just have it right here. I just have a little cheap setup because at this point, I pretty much can do everything on my uh, iPad Pro. So it just sits here. It's hooked up through a uh, display port and then an audio out into speakers. And it's a Y cable. So I could, uh, I have another like 3.5 mil jack that I can go into, but that's like when I first set all this up, because now I just use AirPods to go into it, but that's really all you get, just uh, right there. I don't really think there's And then I'm just working with, uh, I got this really cheap on uh, eBay. It's pretty good, it's still on the same battery as they said, like they're at 15% and need charge for like a year or two now, so somehow they still hold up and the MX Master Logitech mouse. This was a little more pricey, but it's uh, really worth it. It's nice and comfortable, a lot of buttons and functions on it. And this uh, Samsung curved monitor, which is probably a little bit overkill, but I had a 24 inch Samsung curved monitor and wanted to upgrade to a 27. And the only one I could find that was curved and at least 1440p was a gaming one. Now that was like three years ago. I'm sure now they probably had a more generic and you could probably get a different one, but it does have like 144 Hertz refresh rate and everything, but that's really all there is to just the plain Jane setup. All right. So I'm just going to go ahead and start it up. Just kind of like a quick boot test, but not really. Uh, you might be able to hear that, I'm not sure. It does have a SSD in it. It had a factory Apple one, because they actually did have them back in 2012 as an option. But I replaced it with the Samsung Evo. I think it was a, I don't really even want to say 970, 980. Uh, it was whatever was new in 2019. And it's also, they're both 250. So I took that old one out that had like a bunch of cycles on, even though it ran fine and put in the newer um, Samsung one. And it, it does have a little bit better benchmarks, but just to get that little bit of longevity and a little more speed out of it. So I really think for most of this video, I'm just gonna talk about the reasons why uh, there's better Mac options now, Mac mini. Uh, but uh, I do have everything uh, maxed out basically. Okay, so the correct thing was the Samsung 860 Evo. So I guess I'm thinking of the newer generation. Uh, the only reason that this one would still hold its value, and this is what I said back when I made that first video, this is the i7 model. So it's a 2.3 gigahertz i7. I believe it's like a 3770. Um, I think that was what was out in 2012. I don't think it was 40 or uh, 43. Not that it really matters. I mean, either way, it's really old now. But the reason you get the i7 is it's a quad core and that it has hyper threading. And I believe all the i5 Mac minis from 2012 were dual core. And then for some reason, all the uh, 2014 Mac minis where you couldn't open them and change things, they were like low power, like um, dual core i5s. Then you had, I think, the 2018 Mac minis, which used beefed up new Intel, which was pretty good, but now you obviously have the M1. But even to this day, this i7 still runs pretty good. And for hard drives, again, Samsung SSD 250, that's my boot drive. Really the most taken up on there is my iTunes library, which it, these days I don't add anything to it. I just stream and use YouTube. I mean, the quality is almost as good. I mean, you really can't notice, at least with, you know, AirPods or non like high end uh, audio equipment. Uh, so I'm just streaming at this point. And the terabyte data, that's mostly just pictures and documents. Uh, I take my YouTube videos and uh, those, I, I can put all that on an external drive and save space on here. 
and then the memory I have, I believe it's DDR3, um, 1600 megahertz, so it's maxed out at 16. You really want that. I mean, it doesn't matter because the RAM's changeable in this. That's why the 2012 was so sought after up until recently. Um, so it doesn't matter if it has four gigs, eight, whatever. You can DDR3 is really cheap now, so you can go ahead and get 16 gigs, get the at least 1600 megahertz. It won't run higher than that, but at least get that 1600, and you'll max that out, and it's just great. Uh, it ate, I think it would maybe page file or whatever uh, Mac refers to it as, but at 16, it uses more of the memory for each thing, so it seems to run a little better, but uh, it uh, it never comes near max now. I don't think I've ever even got more than 10. That'd be with Chrome open, uh, maybe Photoshop open, uh, iTunes open or something. Normally wouldn't have all those things open, so it, uh, to me, it's 16 is enough for me. And I mean, you can probably just tell I really, hopefully nothing, I don't think there's really anything that personal on here. I do have a Microsoft Surface. It's the, I think it's the Surface Pro 3. Uh, it was a dual core i5, so it was okay. Uh, it was SSD, obviously, but it only had eight gigs of RAM. So it's pretty outdated, but I still keep it just in case there's a program that only runs with Windows or works better on Windows. Like uh, odd things like uh, firmware updates for radar detectors or those dash cams or something. Sometimes those are easier to do on uh, Windows than Mac. But I, you can say I'm really not using that much on here. Uh, see how quick things boot up. I mean, this is kind of just pointless at this point. Um, iTunes, I don't think anything personal. I actually don't boot or edit my videos on here. Uh, I edit them on my iPad Pro. I have no problem with that. I, I would imagine probably even it's not it's the non M1 version, but I would imagine just for straight up video editing, it's probably more efficient than this is. What I actually use this for is uh, once I have my video uploaded, type in the tags and the, do the timeline or whatever, because it's easier to bounce between two tabs like. Uh, description with the type in the timeline, open window with uh, the video, and then I watch it and find out where the uh, different chapters are at and to do ad placement and stuff like that. So it's, I mean, you could do that on a Chromebook. It's really not performance oriented, but that's mo mostly at this point what I use this for. If I need to type something out, even though I have the magic keyboard, it's for the uh, Apple or the, the iPad. It's still sometimes a little easier to just set it at a desk and do it that way. But I think for the rest of this video, that's just kind of reminiscing, to be honest. Let me go. Actually, that's one more thing I'll put. The only glitch I've noticed with this is I, I my upload speeds are really bad. It's a DSL, which stands for Dick Sucking Landline, in case you didn't know. Um, if it's a smaller file, I'll just upload it on my phone, on the app, and it uh, it won't eat too much of my plan away. But if it's like a bigger file, I'll upload it and just let it sit on uh, the computer and keep the computer on all the time. But I noticed, so I'll turn the energy saver off so the computer doesn't shut down or go to sleep. But I'll make it to where like after 20 minutes the screen goes off. And sometimes if you keep checking on the download like maybe three, four times, I noticed that it won't boot back up, like the computer's still running, but it won't open the, um, the screen won't populate again, and it's on DisplayPort, and I, that, it must be a display driver thing, because if I unplug the DisplayPort and plug in the uh, HDMI, because this monitor supports both, and I have just an extra HDI, HDMI cord hanging off of it, it'll display again, or if you just force, because you can't see what you're doing, if you force restart the Mac and still have the display port on, then it'll just restart and work. So sometimes like you bring the screen back on several times and it won't come back on. Oddly enough, I had that with like a Toshiba laptop, like a 2012 Toshiba laptop. I think it was that, it might have, I had an Acer before that, but one of them did the same thing, but it was when they went into sleep mode, they would just like dot boot back out of it. This is still running, but it just won't, the screen display won't come on sometimes. So that's the only glitch I've ever really noticed. Sometimes if I open like uh, the Photoshop, which I have the uh, bad boy version of Photoshop because I really can't use it that well, 
Uh, the new ones, I mean, it's not worth paying a subscription for something you're pretty much never going to use. Sometimes that won't work. It'll, like, get that beach ball thing. And uh, that's actually one more reason why I haven't updated the uh, OS beyond Mojave, is I thought that it didn't support 32-bit uh, apps anymore, and I think that bad boy version of Photoshop 32-bit. And, I mean... The 2012 Mac Mini only supports the uh, one after, which I think was Catalina. So to me, I just don't update it. Uh, Mojave is the only one I've ever used. I think school computers used maybe Sierra or something back in the day. But to me, it works just fine. So I'm just not going to mess with it. So I actually did price some of these Macs not too long ago. Let's see here. Yeah, you can see. I'll just talk about a few, and I'm going to leave the video at that, quite frankly. Um, the prices are really good now. Three years ago, when you you only, those 2014 ones, don't even buy one. I mean, unless you get it for free, they're not worth it. Um, 2012s are really desirable, and then I think the 2018s were still brand new. So it was basically 2012 or brand new 2018. So the prices were still pretty high. Now you can see most of these are i5s, some of the i7s are showing up. They go for more and obviously rightfully so because they're much better. A lot of them at this point, the people even update them, so they'll update to an SSD. I don't think too many are like mine where they took everything out and added that second bay. So you can run two SSDs or uh, SSD and an HDD like I'm doing. Uh, I wouldn't buy one based on RAM because, again, it doesn't... I mean, if it has 16, that's great, but it doesn't matter because it's cheap and you can do it yourself very easily. So you can see most of these, the i5s go for just a little over 100. i7s go for no more than 300, most 250. I wouldn't pay 300 at this point unless it comes with, like, a nice new keyboard and mouse or something, but... So the price is right on them, but I really wouldn't recommend one at this point. The advantage is the modularity. Again, you could buy a brand new SSD, so you could have the best performance you can get that way. 16 gigs of RAM, but you're never really going to need to go anywhere with it beyond that. At this point, I think it makes more sense just to get that new M1. Uh, even the lowest tier, I would imagine, would pretty much just destroy this. Or probably even the 2018s. Like, I think some of the base model was like an i3. Um, now, you would have to do uh, external storage. If you want to save money, I wouldn't go more than 512 on the internal spec. You'd be fine with 256 because I'm fine with what I have. Unless it's like your main station, then maybe you want more. But you do have to max out that RAM. You want to at least get 16 gig or 32 gig on that M1. So that way you never have to touch it because you can't upgrade it. So you want to, that's where you want to put your money out with that. So since this one, you can get it one cheap. I mean, it's maybe like for that $250, probably wouldn't be that bad. But at least for me, and I think a lot of other people, we were buying these 2012s. Because you could, like, the i7 was good. You could max out the RAM and get a good SSD in it. But now, with that M1, you're getting really good performance and you're getting an SSD and just get a higher tier of the RAM and you're good to go. You're not going to need to upgrade it anytime soon. So you don't really need that modularity, but it, it is nice to have it. And that's it would be preferable if they did that, which they don't, but... And the only other ones I could think, again, the Mac, if you're going to get the M1, probably be better just to buy that new from Apple. See, these 2012, or these 2018s, they go for a good bit more. And then you got to watch how they're, because the 2014, they'll say it's like 18 operating system or something. Now these see these are a little too highly priced for me. I would uh, just buy a base model M1 for what I think six hundred or seven hundred, whatever they are. Then two hundred more for the RAM upgrade. But like that one looks like it's in good shape. Has the box price isn't bad, but for that I would just buy the new one. So these 
or like a little bit more like the old few years back when you got the 2012 where they were still kind of holding their price. Although I assume a lot of these aren't the base model. I believe the i3 was. So that's, uh, I think that's a little overpriced. I mean, they're probably going for this, probably what the market is, but to me, that's not appealing. I say the i7 2012 performs, so I would say you want to be budget-minded, go ahead and get that, upgrade it, you're still going to be cheap on that price, or just go brand new M1. But these 2018s, they definitely have just as much capability like the M1, but you're paying almost that same M1 price. So I think I'm going to leave it there. That's really all I wanted to talk about is uh, 2012. It For me, it still works. It still gets everything done that I need because I really I don't game on it. I really don't even edit on it. It's mostly just for web browsing and then a few things like some photo editing and uh, that's about it. So you can do that on any Mac or anything at all. I guess not even a Chromebook. I think the whole point is just at this point, the uh, the 2012 model doesn't have that dominance that it used to. It's not really the king of the mountain anymore. Either the 2018, if you did want to pay the higher price or just the brand new M1, if you want the best Mac Mini you can get, that's where you want to go. Just altogether avoid the 2014. Maybe, again, like I talked about, some of the 2012 models, if price is right and it's spec'd out, but it's not really worth it. The new ones are finally what you should go for. So I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, hopefully it's interesting if you just wanted to know someone in 2012 or 2022 that has a 10-year-old 2012 Mac Mini. That's my update. Mostly just focused on the better options we finally have now. But it still gets the job done for me. And uh, wondering if you, know, do you have one, you have it spec'd out, it's cheap to do now. Or is it just focused on the newer models? But uh, either way, uh, thanks for watching, and you'll see me in the next one. Have a good one.